Squirrel Tribe 2.0, what is up my dudes? Happy hump day. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Listen, oh, it's been a morning. It's been a morning already. Listen, I just finished recording for regular, regular Squirrel Tribe. I guess we'll call it regular Squirrel Tribe. Like, like, um, I don't even know what to call it. Stress inducing Squirrel Tribe lately because of this whole East Palestine trail der train derailment thing. Like it's stressing me the crap out. I don't even live in Ohio. I don't even live in East Palestine. I don't even know anybody in Ohio and I'm still stressed out for all these people. But I finished recording a video over there today. It went 45 minutes long. It wasn't supposed to be that long, but y'all know me. Once I start talking, I don't really know how to shut up. And it's, what time is it? It is 12.22, which technically is lunchtime. And I've had breakfast, so this isn't weird. But after recording what I had to record and the things I needed to talk about, we're going to have some wine for Squirrel Tribe 2.0. If y'all want to pause and go get yourself a little glass of wine, I say little. I don't know how to pour this thing like the correct amount. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just going to pour until the glass feels too heavy or the bottle feels too light. Whichever one comes first. That feels like a it feels like a lunchtime amount of wine in, in my opinion. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. It has been a minute, my dudes, since I've seen you. And that's on me. That's not your fault. I love you all. You've done nothing wrong. It's just that I have way too much shit going on and I don't know how to prioritize my time. So there's that. Like yesterday it was, I need to record for 2.0 because I miss my people. But then it was also like, ma'am, go to the gym. And I love you all but I took my ass to the gym instead of recording here yesterday. Please don't be upset. Uh, it was necessary. I needed it. I needed to put on headphones and just turn up like angry music and then happy music, but then back to angry music because it gives me really good energy for working out, especially when I'm doing like shoulders and curls and stuff. I just needed the energy. <sighs> but y'all, do I have a plan for this video? No, not at all. I had like one thing I want to talk about, but that's about it. I have nothing else planned. It's Wednesday. It feels like time is freaking flying. It's almost the end of February. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I blinked it, like it was Christmas and then I blinked and then it was New Year's and then I blinked and here we are. Like, I don't know what happened over the last, how many weeks are we in? Seven weeks, eight weeks? Are we seven weeks into 2023? Y'all, seven weeks into 2023 kind of feels like a crappy 2023 so far for a lot of people based off of everything that's gone, gone on in the country so far, the world, what's going on everywhere. Hopefully this thing figures itself out soon and turns happy. I don't know the right words here. All I know is I would like by this summer for more people to be happy and less people to be stressed, for more people to be able to say what's on their mind and not have like negative repercussions for it. But Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Speaking of speak what's on your mind with, with uh, freedom of speech. We're gonna go freedom of speech on this one. Um, I'm pretty sure for those of you who have been here with me for a long time, and if you're 2.0ers, then you've been with me for a while and you know how my brain works and, and whatever else. I don't believe that freedom of speech is the same thing as freedom to be a jackass. And that's the problem. Like a lot of people equate freedom of speech with literally being able to say whatever you want and I, I personally don't feel that that's the case. Like if you want to say something to somebody, I think you can do it without just being a moron with your head up your butt. Like I don't understand why that is what you want to equate with freedom of speech. I should be able to jump on somebody's channel or wherever else and tell them how stupid they are and how ugly they are and how stupid their eyebrows look and whatever else. And that's my freedom of speech. No, that's your freedom to be a douchebag. Like there's a massive difference between the two, in my opinion. Just because I wouldn't get on somebody's channel or Facebook or wherever else or out in person face to face and just be a raging moron at people. Maybe because I was raised with manners and, and things like that and a lot of these people weren't. But there's a, there's a massive difference between saying something to get your point across and then just saying something to be a douchebag. Like, you know what I mean? There, there's a big difference. But the reason I thought about this is because I saw this article. This actually came out on Saturday. I'm going to read you the title to this and y'all are going to be like, what? And I'm going to be like, I know. And then we're going to be like, what? Okay. Here's the title. ACLU hails first after school Satan club uh, meeting at Virginia elementary school, a victory for free speech and religious liberty. I'm going to take a sip of this now after reading that because it's necessary. Hold on. Mm. Mm. <coughs> I choked myself. Hold on. I got so excited about how good it tastes. Oh, breathe. That's what happens. 
<laughs> when you're too excited about wine at 12:30 on a Wednesday. So I haven't had this in like two weeks and it tastes so good. But anyway, after school Satan club. Now I was going to say, let's be devil's advocate, but oh, that's punny, right? That's like an unintended pun. But let me read this to you. Let me show you this picture first, because the title itself is disturbing in all honesty, whether you are religious or not, whether you can be, whether you are Christian, whether you're Catholic, which I think goes to the same thing. I don't understand. I'm not going to lie. You got Methodist, Protestant, you have, um, uh, uh, Baptist, you've got Catholic, you have Jewish, you have, um, there's so many others that I can't think of right now. Y'all, what's the one I'm trying to think of? Like the most, I can't think of it. I need more wine. I can't think of all of them. There's, there's, a, there's a bajillion different religions out there. Are they all considered Christian? Like is Christianity the, the like umbrella and everything else is the underneath or is Christianity part of the underneath and the umbrella is just no umbrella. Ha help me, tell me y'all, y'all probably know. I'm not hundred percent positive here. I went to a Baptist church growing up, not a huge fan of it personally. I looked into Catholic stuff because that stuff always interested me with the angels and demons and the whatnots that always interested me. But then like the non-denominational stuff makes the most sense to me and, and whatever else. But th the whole point in this is that you, you can be atheist, which where you don't believe in anything. And I, they give that, that word a bad, a bad meaning in my mind, because just because you don't believe that there is a higher power, I don't think makes you a bad person. And I don't think believing that there's a higher power makes you a bad person. Everybody can believe or not believe whatever they want. That is the freedom of choosing like free will, your own choice, right? But atheists, they always give it such a bad, like bad taste in your mouth kind of word. Whereas technically Satan should be the bad taste in your mouth, whether you believe in all this stuff or not. Uh, but look, this is the picture. This is at an elementary school. Uh, S. M. Williams primary is what it looks like. Y'all, how? Nope. Hold on. Screen. Here we go. Y'all, y'all, do, like, do you see this? Okay. <laughs> so my kid's in middle school and I had to ask her, I was like, uh, kid, what kind of like after school clubs and activities do you guys have there that maybe I'm not a hundred percent aware of? And she's like, I don't know all the ones that were at sign up. And I was like, have they talked about any other kind of you know, after school or before school or at midnight on Friday the 13th clubs that I might not be aware of. And she's like, like, what are you talking about? I was like, are there religious clubs at school? And she's like, no. I was like, are there like dark arts clubs at school? And she's like, you mean like Harry Potter? And I was like, yes, like Harry Potter. And she's like, no, there's none of that. And I was like, okay, cool. Cause I have to like yank your little ass out of there real quick. But so Students at a Virginia elementary school attended their first after school Satan club meeting on Thursday. The club is sponsored by the Satanic Temple. Okay. The ACU called it a victory for free speech and religious liberty. Students at a Virginia school held their first after school Satan club meeting on Thursday after being put on hold for months. The American Civil Liberties Union of Virginia announced the meeting at BM, BM Williams Primary School in Chesapeake, Virginia was held despite efforts by some to shut down the club and prevent it from gaining equal access to school facilities, the ACLU said, describing it as a victory for free speech and religious liberty. Now, before I go any farther, um, no pun intended here, devil's advocate, or look at it from the other side. If that school has a God, Christ, Jesus, whatever, however they want to phrase it, club, technically there should be the allowance of the opposite end of that club because it is still, if, if you want to promote religious freedom, you have to promote religious freedom in all aspects, whether it is for Christianity, against Christianity, uh, nothingness. Like, is there, I'm sure I've heard of atheist clubs before because schools have had um, church clubs, but at an elementary school, that's where I get a little like, mm, I feel like these kind of things should be like high schoolers and up. Like once kids are old enough to make decisions on their own, instead of parroting what they've been told by parents, grandparents, TV, churches, whatever else, like that's, that's my thing. And I know I say we don't talk about religion and stuff, but Hey, that's what we're doing. So me, when I was younger, my dad, who, ugh, my dad, who wouldn't make me go to church with him, 
and I use the word make because it was never, it was never given to me when I was younger as a positive thing. It was as a, you must do this or you're a bad human kind of thing. Or, um, just read the book. Don't ask the questions because then that makes you a bad person. If you don't just immediately believe everything and just, you don't need to understand it, just read it and believe it kind of thing. So for me, when I was younger, I had too many questions and no answers and I was always a little confused about a couple things and stuff like that. But I felt like if I was allowed, if you were allowed, if, hold on, how to phrase, work with me here. Um, at my age, when I, when I was in elementary school, I would not have joined a uh, church group or a Satan group or whatever you want to call it, devil's group. However, I wouldn't have joined either one because neither one would have made sense to me at, at that time. So the fact that this is an elementary school with young, young kids, that feels like a parent push at these kids. Cause when you're young, your, your brain is developed by the things that you see in here and, and the people around you, right? Like they say that your environment raises you, basically it, it molds who you are, your environment molds who you are, whether in a good way or a bad way. They, there's that thing where you have two brothers and one alcoholic dad. One brother grows up to be just like dad. The other brother grows up to be a complete opposite because he saw what being like dad would have been like and didn't want to be that person. So your environment can, can grow you in however you see fit or whatever you decide from it. Ah, y'all, I'm really bad at phrasing things today. But for there to be, oh, I know we're saying freedom of speech here and freedom of religion. And, and if you're going to have a church group, you got to have, be, be willing to have the opposite side of it. But here, okay, here's my thing. If you're in first, second, third grade, personal opinion here, y'all don't shoot the messenger, personal opinion here. I don't think they, kids that age know for themselves what they do or do not believe when it comes to higher beings, higher powers, lower powers, if we're talking about the devil, whatever else. I think that, that a lot of that comes from what they're, what they're taught from their parents. And for there to be a Satan club, it sounds to me like some of their parents are teaching them that there is only bad, which here's the thing. In order to believe in Satan, you must also believe in God. That's how that works. In order to believe in God, you must also believe in Satan. So technically, shouldn't both sides be able to see eye to eye on some things? Huh? Random, random thought there. So it says here, um, the Virginia pilot reported last fall that the idea of the club was requested by parents as a response to the Good News Club, another student club run by the Child Evangelism Fellowship. According to the pilot, parents wanted the club, which is sponsored by the Satanic Temple, for their non, non, the, non theistic what? No, I don't know how to say this. Atheistic, non, non theistic what is this word? N-O-N-T-H-E-I-S-T-I-C. Non-theistic children? That just sounds like a dumb made up word. I know it's not, but it just sounds really dumb coming off my tongue. So June Everett, the after school Satan Club national campaign director, previously told the pilot that the club only operates in schools where parents request them and other religious groups are already operating. So at least there's that. They didn't just bring Satan into the school without God being on the other end, right? I guess there's that. Um, where the group said students in the club will do arts and crafts, puzzles, and science projects. I have so many questions. So many questions. I can only get away with saying so many thoughts here on YouTube before YouTube is like, ma'am, I'm going to shut you down. Just FYI. Oh, side note, totally unrelated, but the video I put up yesterday about East Palestine, Ohio, it, it has to go, when you upload a video on YouTube, it has to go through checks. It runs through checks, right? It wants to make sure you don't have music in the background, that you're not showing a bunch of stuff you shouldn't be showing, and whatever else. And my video yesterday, I literally sat in my car and just talked facts. And then there were a few opinions in there, but I talked facts. I read from articles and whatever else. And while it was running its checks, it kept finding checks. And I'm like, how? You're, I'm literally only telling you the news, but it was fine. It was check. It was, it was checking f fact, checking the news. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. But anyway, back to this. Um, the ACLU said the club faced unconstitutional. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Hold on. The group said that students in the club will do arts and crafts, puzzles, and science projects. It's the science projects that throws me off because a lot of people who believe 
highly, a lot of highly religious people don't believe in science. And that may be generalizing, and I'm not trying to generalize, just what I have come across is that a lot of highly religious people don't believe in, in science. So science projects is weird to me. And then arts and crafts, like what, like clay, clay horns? Like, I don't know what that means, arts and crafts. <sighs> okay. We aren't sacrificing goats or praising the dark Lord, Everett told the pilot. Yeah, well, wait to be seen. Uh, hopefully not, but... Um, the ACLU said the club faced unconstitutional challenges over the past few months while the good news club was able to meet immediately after school and did not face a security fee. The ACLU said Chesapeake public schools initially requested the satanic temple pay a security fee over safety concerns from protesters. Additionally, the school system asked the group to meet at 6 PM and not immediately after school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts on that. I haven't read this yet, by the way. This is what I like to do. Y'all know this. I go into these things blind and we talk it out. So here's my thought. Are you ready? Again, I hope y'all still love me after we're done with this. So here's my thought. Maybe you don't even like me to begin with and that's why you're here, just so you can jump in the comments and be like, you suck. Whatever, it's okay too. So freedom of speech, right? Um, okay, so here we, here we are. The Good News Club was able to meet immediately after school and did not face a security fee, right? Because... I don't know why, but they said that the satanic temple had to pay a security fee over safety concerns from protesters. Do you know who the protesters would be? The same ones who are probably in the good news club. And they, so the security fee is because they were worried that the flip side of the religion, the, the ones for God and Jesus, as opposed to for the Satan, devil, whatever, for him would cause an issue while protesting, would cause damage and physical harm. You'll hear that, right? That's what that says. That's how I read that. That's why they needed a security fee to cover whatever the protesters would have damaged during their protesting, which is saying that they believe that the, the good side of the religion would be, um, what's the word, uh, would be angry and willingly cause damage out of their anger. Mm, okay. Okay. Additionally, the school system asked the group to meet at 6 p.m. and not immediately after school. Well, I can tell you why not immediately after school, because they let the, what is it called? The Good News Club, the, 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 good, the good ones, the bad ones. I don't, I don't want to name it that way. But they let the other one meet right after school. So you couldn't put them both together. It's like oil and water, right? You don't want to just shove them together because then poof, bad things, right? But waiting until 6 p.m., I'm like, well, don't you need like darkness and fires and stuff like that? But I'm pretty sure that's like Wiccans and witches, not just Satan worshipers. I don't know how this works. Never been a Satan worshiper, just FYI. So I don't know how it all works. Also, I'm not going to find out. I'll do research for you guys, but I'm not researching that shit. That's not happening. Um, and, uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Under the First Amendment, the government can't treat one religious group less favorably than the other and it can't give potential objectors or hecklers a veto over unpopular speech by charging the speaker, here the After School Satan Club, a security fee. That the school district ultimately recognizes this and is taking steps to correct these unlawful actions and policies is an enormous victory for free speech, religious liberty, and democracy. It says that the requests for the uh, security deposit were withdrawn before Thursday's first meeting. So that's that. I just, I saw that, uh, I saw the title of the article and I was like, oh, this should be interesting. And I was kind of curious. So here's the thing. They're excited because they have the ability to go in there and practice free speech, freedom of religion and whatever else, which I get. It still is weird to me that it's at a school, that any of these things are at schools because there's supposed to be a separation from church and state. This was not a private school. This is a public school. Therefore, in my personal opinion, shouldn't you not have Okay, I'm not even gonna say my personal opinion. In my personal, in my, in my, in my thought process, in my questions, let's go that route. If you're supposed to have a differentiation between church and state, should should that shouldn't that mean that there should not be any religious clubs inside public schools? Also, why they took away the the pledge of allegiance because it says under God, um, and should, that's why I think you can't find Bibles in school libraries. Why there isn't prayer before lunch or any of that kind of stuff? Because don't if you're going to have a separation of church and state, shouldn't that be always? But then they're going to say, well, these clubs are after school hours. But the problem is they're still on taxpayer school property. So how does that really work? Like why is there a loophole for that when it comes to religion, but not for like other kinds of things? 
Religion always gets like a loophole that other things don't get, I've noticed. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just something I have noticed throughout my life. Um, so that's that. Okay, so this other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, this says a family's tragedy leads to U.S. Supreme Court social media shutdown. And I mentioned this over on the other channel at, at one point that, that there's going to be a change uh, for YouTube coming up. Oh, hold on. This is soon. This is like happening now. So, uh, oh, I don't know how to say her name. No Noemi, N-O-H-E-M-I. Hold on, phone call, go away. Uh-uh. Me. So no, Noemi Gonzalez, a 23-year-old aspiring industrial designer, ventured to Paris as a student at California State University, Long Beach, on a study abroad, abroad program. She lost her cell phone, so one day in November 2015, she let her mother, Beatrice, know she was well with a one-word message on Facebook. Mommy. Okay. Beatrice responded with one word. Mimi, her daughter's nickname. We had this bond, Beatrice said in an interview, sending me just a single word. I understood that she was okay. She was good. By me answering Mimi, I was saying, I'm here, whatever you need. Two days after that message exchange, Noemi, Noemi died in a hail of bullets fired by Islamist militants as she sat at a bistro called La Belle Epoque, part of a rampage of shootings and suicide bombings that killed 130 people with the Islamic State militant group claiming responsibility. Beatrice Gonzalez now finds herself at the center of a U.S. Supreme Court shutdown over the scope of protections contained in federal law freeing social media platforms from legal responsibility for content posted online by their users. Arguments before the nine justices are scheduled for Tuesday, yesterday. I haven't seen an update yet, so... Uh. Mm -hmm. Helped by attorneys who have fought to hold internet companies accountable for actions that allegedly aided and abetted uh, militant groups, the Gonzalez family sued Alphabet Inc.'s Google LLC, Google, y'all, for financial damages because its YouTube video sharing service hosted Islamic State content and its algorithms recommended the group's videos to certain users. Now, here's my thing. Unless they can prove that, it, that the same people who shot and killed her daughter watched those YouTube videos and that those videos were recommended to them by the algorithm as opposed to being searched up by them. I don't know how this case would work, but, and that's a lot that you have to go through to be able to prove that point to point to point. It says the justices will hear the family's appeal of a lower court's decision to throw out the lawsuit, uh, largely based on immunity granted to social media companies under section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996. Listen, I'm on YouTube, and even I will say that the, the level of decency from 1996 to now has changed drastically. People were not nearly as vulgar and awful and just, I mean, trying to make people hate themselves as they were in like 1996. Now it is much, much worse. There are so many, we'll call them keyboard warriors, but really they're just trolls. They're just really unhappy individuals out there trying to make other people as unhappy as them. There is so much more of that now as technology and, and social media has progressed from 1996 till now. 1996, you didn't have that many options to get on there and, you know, cyber bully people. Now there are so many ways you could get on there and do all kinds of stuff. And unfortunately, y'all, I'm not going to lie. This is, this is what I've realized from my other channel. This is what I've realized. When I try to make videos about just the happy things and I'm tasting drinks and we're talking about products and whatever else, YouTube is like, mm, no boring. Don't do it. But when I talk about current events and news and I give my opinion, they're like, Oh, we like that. Let's, let's push that out a little bit more. And when I give opinions, personal opinions, where I say something like, I don't feel safe right here because of the way this is set up, they push it out even more, but they push it out to the same people that are going to reply back to me. Well, you're stupid. Why don't you just go kill yourself? Those are the comments that I now deal with on a daily basis. Thanks to the algorithm doing what the algorithm does. Like, which is why I need y'all because the, the, the it's a lot, y'all. It's a lot. The downside of trying to talk about things that people don't generally talk about just like in the passing on the street or over coffee at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or your random coffee shop is that it brings a lot, a lot of neg negative energy in my direction. And when I look at the statistics through YouTube and the videos that have the most views of mine, I've got a few uh, over 400,000. Yesterday's is almost at 200,000 already. The, the, the statistics show me that it's being pushed by the YouTube, YouTube algorithm out there. And what I notice is the more that the YouTube algorithm pushes my videos that are considered, um, we'll say, considered fact-based, but also with 
opinions on conspiracy or however you want to phrase that when they push those out they're pushing them out to the same people who are willingly looking for those kind of videos so they can turn around and tell the creator and everybody else in the comments how stupid they are ignorant they are how they should hurt themselves how whatever else and y'all it gets it gets to be a lot i have so many blocked words that have to do with like harm and just foul things that it's ridiculous that every day i have to go in and add a new word to to not have that just massive negative energy put into the comments for myself to read and for you guys to read. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So changing a law from 1996 till now, personally, I'm okay with it. I also know though, that if it gets passed and they, they can say that they can, um, fine or ban certain social media, uh, apps or even people on social media, um, for, a video that may have been suggested to somebody and that somebody watched and then had a thought to do something negative. Uh, I'm not a fan of that part. Like, I don't think that, I don't even know how to go with that one. All I know is that if, if this goes through the court and the court goes, Hey, listen, we're going to, we're going to agree with him and we're going to make these changes. There will be a massive, massive change to how everything works, not just here on YouTube, but in the news itself, in movies and TV, because it has to go further than just Google. It has to go everywhere. If you decide, if this, if this Supreme Court hearing decides that something that somebody has shown can then determine how they turn around and act, there goes music, there goes entertainment in general, because anybody can say, oh, well, I listened to so-and-so and that's what made me go do this. I, I watched this and that's what made me go do that. Anybody can say that, but there's no proof behind it. So if this gets approved and, and they pass through, I don't know if the proof is the right word, but if this gets passed and they say, yes, you can blame what you watch and what you hear on your own actions, then that's going to make a massive change in one freedom of speech, number one. Um, but then the ability to create for like everybody, I just, just a thought putting that out there. Um, what does this say? Uh, where, where are we? Hold on. Okay. So we talked about section 230 communication decency act of 1996. They will hear a lady case involving Twitter Inc on Wednesday. That's today. It's very important for the law to change, Beatrice said, adding that a ruling in her favor would benefit not just her family, but all people who have been suffering these attacks everywhere. The lawsuit argued that YouTube's actions provided material support to Islamic State. Uh, it was brought under a federal law called the Anti-Terrorism Act, which lets Americans recover damages related to an act of international terrorism. Side note, I think that's what the checks on my video yesterday were because I said domestic terrorism and then they were like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't talk about that here. And it went through checks and then they let it go through. But I can guarantee because I've said that word a couple times, terrorism, a couple times in this video, I'm going to see that checks running or checks found or issues found. I guarantee when I go to upload this, that's what's going to happen. Um, it says here, critics, including Democratic President Joe Biden and his Republican predecessor, Donald Trump, have said Section 230 needs reform in light of the actions of social media companies in the decades since its enactment. All right. Listen, you how, what? Okay. <laughs> how to phrase this. Um, okay, hold on. Cause I, I got to figure out how to phrase this to where you're not all like Michelle, really? Um, so Biden, good old grandpa, Joe, sleepy Joe, dementia riddled Joe. He probably has issues with it for far different reasons than Trump has issues with it. Trump has issues with it because they kicked him off platforms because they didn't like what he was saying. So the, the whole freedom of speech thing got impeded a little bit there with, with Trump. So I, I can see how he would want there to be changes, but he also has to realize if there's changes, he may be shooting himself even more in the foot with the way he talks on social media. He may just be completely banned everywhere if this does go through and they do enact changes. I don't think people think that part through. Um, let's see. Uh, the law prohibits interactive computer services from being treated as the publisher or speaker of information provided by outside users. This court should not undercut a central building block of the modern internet, Google told the justices in a filing. Eroding Section 230's protection would create perverse incentives that could both increase removals of legal but controversial speech on some websites and lead other websites to close their eyes to harmful and even illegal content. Reshape the internet. That's what they're calling it. Uh, legal scholars fret about a fading of free speech online with certain content stifled should Section 230 be weakened. That user content might include information that both sides of the political aisle might find important. For example, claims about sexual harassment or police abuse or government policies or vaccines. Uh, this case truly could reshape the internet for the next generation. 
I'm not gonna read any more of that. I'm just gonna say that yesterday when I was uploading to the main channel, Squirrel Tribe, and it said, you know, finding checks or checks found or something like that, um, one found, I don't know how they phrase it. I was like, well, what could they have possibly found? So I actually went to um, their section to see what they could possibly be talking about. I wonder if I can find it here now that I'm talking to you guys. Um, what the issues would be. Oh, I don't know how to get to it. But they have updated they have updated some of their policy, right? And it says that now they can find issue if you're talking about topics that may, um, may bother people, topics that may incite um, anger at government whatevers, and technically talking about a train derailment that's gonna kill a lot of people because all the chemicals may incite some anger at some you know, EPA or whoever else. So I don't even know what part of my video yesterday they were like, whoa, ma'am, we gotta be careful here because just the changes they have made here alone makes it so that anytime you say or do anything they don't like, they can just, just yank that right away. A lot of people are like, go to Rumble, go over here, go somewhere else like that but even they are starting to implement things as well. So pretty soon you're either gonna have, it's either gonna be there's no freedom of speech anywhere or they're gonna have to say, screw it all, let anything fly. And then that would be even worse, honestly. If, if there were no regulations whatsoever versus, that's my question, what's better? No regulations whatsoever. You can willy nilly do whatever the H-E double hockey sticks you wanna do anywhere you wanna do it or overly, Reg re regulated and there's certain criteria you must fall into and if you fall out of those criteria you can't do anything like which one is worse which one is better as a I guess I'm a YouTube creator I don't know I don't create anything I just talk um I don't I don't know I don't know because either way would be a shit show in all honesty you got to have that happy medium and I feel like right now is the most happy medium you're gonna get any tweaks, any changes, it's going to be good for some and bad for others, no matter how you look at it. So that's what I got on that. Listen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got myself a new cup yesterday. Can I show you? Look, beach happy, but be happy. Do y'all see how cute that is? This is a Tervis cup. I don't I think it's Tervis. We went to this place in Rosemary Beach on Monday. What was yesterday? Tuesday, Monday. We went to this place in Rosemary Beach on Monday. We decided we were gonna go someplace we hadn't been before. We wanted to walk around outside. So we went to Rosemary Beach and um, we, we've driven down this thing called 30A in, uh, I don't know if that's Walton County, but it's in the Panhandle of Florida. So we go for a drive and we hadn't eaten, side note. I was really hungry, it was like 12 o'clock. And I was like, this is not brunch, sir, this is lunch, but let's go. I'm hungry, feed me, because mama don't like to be hungry. So we're driving and we decided to go down 30A and we noticed there is a ton of new construction going up uh, near the beach, like so much. And it's not construction that you and I could afford, no. It's construction that Bill Gates could afford. Everything is in the multi-million dollars in order to buy it. And if you wanna rent it, you gotta have thousands of dollars a night. And it's like, oh, Y'all too bougie over here in Rosemary Beach for me. Thank you, boo-boo. I'm gonna go back my direction. But we went down there because uh, th there's a magazine that came out. It was just called Walton. That's the name on the magazine. And it's got all these different restaurants and things in it. And the man hands it to the kid. We get in the car. Kevin hands it to the kid. And he goes, look through there and find a place to go eat. And she opens it up. And the first thing she sees is French toast. And she's like, mmm, French toast. And I was like, cool, let's go. So we put in the address for this place. And when we're driving down 30A in this area, all you see is like green lush trees everywhere. It's not even palm trees. It's like savanna in the middle of, um, in the middle of the beach area. It's really weird, but absolutely gorgeous at the same time. So we're driving and it's like, okay, it's right here on the left. And I'm looking and I'm like, broski where? Like I see some shops, but it looks like there's like this much space, right? So we pull in and this much space opens up to this much space behind it. There's all these like houses that are built up if you've ever seen the, the Disney cartoon Tangled, it looked like the Tangled little village or whatever at the end when the princess goes home. But anyway, um, I digress and show how much of a mother I am. So we get to this place and it's a outdoor uh, brunch lunch place for this hotel. What was it called? Mm, I wanna tell you the name, but I don't remember it, so I'm not gonna tell you. So we go in and we sit down and uh, we look at the menu and everything looks really good. And the kid's like, I want French toast, but I also kind of want some eggs. So she and I split French toast because that's the easiest way to make sure we're both happy. And then both got eggs or whatever else. And I was like, I will take a mimosa, please. So I get a mimosa. And when I tell you this 
$15 mimosa, which I did not look at the price before this and I would have been like, mm, keep your mimosa. It was a $15 mimosa, but it was all champagne. They like poured this much champagne. They're like, here's a little bit of orange juice right on top. So I get halfway through this mimosa and they bring the food out. And the way everything was set up, the kid didn't pour syrup on the French toast. So I had to reach around everything to get to the, French, the syrup for the French toast and like dip my French toast in it. And I did it and on the way back, because I'm me, I knock over my mimosa and I just look at it. And I literally wanted to just sit there and cry. I was like, no, it was so good though. So I knock over my mimosa and one of the servers sees and he looks at me and I look at him and I was like, I'm sorry, I made a mess. Do you have like a napkin? Cause I spilled some stuff on the floor or whatever else. He was like, yeah. He's like, what did you have? And I said, mimosa with orange juice. And he goes, okay. And he left and he brought me a whole new mimosa with orange juice. And I was like, oh, but I had like, I'd already drank like half of it. And he's like, all right, knock this one over again when you get to half and I'll just bring you another one. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I love you. I'm not gonna do it, but I like how you think, sir, because $15 for a drink is a lot of money. Um, but I didn't knock the second one over, it was fine. But I finished the mimosa, we finished our food, and we went walking around at all these little shops and stores and stuff. And y'all, this is totally off topic, but, but while we were walking around, and I've noticed this at my kid's school, I'm not gonna lie, but while we're walking around, I realized how many young females and when I say young females, I mean like elementary school, middle school, some high school girls are out. And I've always had a problem with the clothing that they have for, for kids, girls in general. These little girls walking around, I'm like, it's like your little baby butt cheeks are hanging out. Like why are shorts so flipping short for kids? And why are they making so many like little itty bitty short tops, crop tops for little girls? And why are parents letting them wear it? Y'all. This is my issue. And this is where people are like, oh my God, you're such a Karen. Mm -hmm. And what? Kiss my butt. I have a massive issue with the parents that are more interested in putting their kids in name brand clothes and looking cute so they can go out and be all cutesy together than, I don't know, protecting them. Because as much as we say, it's not, it doesn't matter what you dress like, people should keep their hands to themselves, their eyes to themselves. What you wear does matter. Unfortunately, it does matter. I'm aware of this as a 41 year old woman who has boobs and who has a butt and has some shape to her, although that shape has put on some pounds lately. But I understand how this works. My daughter is only 13. Most people are gonna think she's 18 because she got a butt and some boobs and a cutie duty little face on her. I am very aware how what somebody wears determines how people look at them, which is why y'all look, I dress like a homeless schlub all the time. I wear sweatpants and t-shirts and no makeup and my hair in a bun. Don't look at me. I don't want your eyes on me. Uh, uh Keep walking, Joe. So these little girls walking around in these like barely their clothing while their moms just prance around next to them, I have an issue with. And if you're the mom who lets her kid dress like that, I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Is it because you want to be friends with your kid or is it because you, nope, that's the only reason I could think of. I have no other reason why you would let your kid walk around looking like they're 21 in a nine-year-old body. Like why? Why? And people are like, well, you can't find them clothes. Yes, you can. Stop shopping where you shop. Go shop somewhere else. Hand make that shit. Joanne's fabric just opened up. People are like, go learn how to sew. I'll go learn how to sew some longer shorts so my kid's butt stays in her shorts and not out in the streets where people can see it. Like, I have issues with that. Okay, sorry. That's one of those topics that I get a little huh on because boys don't have that issue. I mean, no, everything on a boy. It, I buy my kids shorts from the boys department. She can thank me later. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. One, your thighs aren't gonna rub together because now your shorts are long enough to cover them. Two, your butt's not gonna hang out because your shorts are long enough to cover them. Three, that's it. We only needed one and two. Three wasn't even necessary. But same thing with shirts. I wear men's shirts. I don't wear women's shirts. You know why? Because they're designed to be like form fitting. Don't look at my form. My form, this is why I record like this. This is why my shirts all come up to here. Like. You don't need to look at my form. My form is not your business. So I don't, I don't put it out there like that. Even in the summertime, I, 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 have a, I have a hard time wearing certain things just because I'm, as you get older, well, actually, as I get older, I probably won't get hit on nearly as much, which is great, but it, it gets a little old uh, for a female constantly having dudes like, what's up? And then the, the lip lick, oh, my kid does this thing. She's like, what's that thing where guys are like, why do they do this? They're like, how you doing? I'm like, stay away from those boys. Any boy that rubs his hands and licks his lips while looking at you, go the opposite direction immediately. Thank you so much. So that's just a random thought I wanted to share with you guys. <laughs> I think that's about it. Listen, we've been here long enough, right? No, 40 minutes. I could do this all day, y'all. You don't want me to do that though. Mm -hmm. Nursing the hell out of this glass of wine for y'all, just FYI. 
Um, no, I think that is it. Hey, look, look at my little pop socket. I want to show you guys. The book was better. I have yet to see a movie that I felt was better than the book. Jurassic Park, I like the book. No, 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 no. Original Jurassic Park, I love that movie. That's the best movie. But the book was still really good. Beauty and the Beast. Okay, the first cartoon I liked. Okay, never mind. Some books are, some movies are better than books. Most of the time, the books are better than the movie, just FYI. What's the one? Harry Potter books, to me, are better than the movies, because I can imagine it myself that way. And, oh, Fifty Shades of Grey, those books, whew, if y'all haven't read them, those books, because you can imagine Dorian and whatever the hell her name was, however you want to imagine them. He, you know, however he needs to look, however she needs to look, and then you read those books, you get a little flustered. I'm just saying, have it with a glass of wine, and ladies, just, ooh. But then the movie came out and I was like, ew, like, really? This, these are the two you want to put together for this hot, steamy, wow kind of stuff? You lost me. I couldn't even go through the first movie. I was like, I'm done. The book was so good and the movie was so just like, like when you light a match and it goes, and then it just goes away. The, it didn't even, it just like slow, whatever the whole, it sucked. I didn't like it. That was me personally. But all the books, hmm, okay. Those were nice. Um, and that's it, guys. I love y'all. I don't have anything else to say. I have plenty to say, but we're not going to do it anymore. Uh, I'm going to go now and figure out where the man went because he leaves so I can record sometimes. I think he went to the clubhouse to hang out. It's nice out. So I'm going to get him to come back, maybe finish some wine, maybe some other stuff. I don't know. It's, it's hump day, my dude. <laughs> TMI, I know. Uh, I love you guys. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'm not going to promise to see you tomorrow. I can't make promises to y'all. I'm going to try. But if it comes down to the gym or the beach... Or recording, you're not gonna see me. <laughs> okay, so I love you. Just keep that in mind if we don't see each other for a while. Okay, bye.